you. Well, all right. Um, so uh, we got part two of uh, Mickey Flanagan at the comedy store. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Part two. Yes. All right, man. Let's go. The eighties was the decade when I was an international lover, major international player, renowned for my love making. Uh, you know, because because it wasn't easy to get love back then. There was still the old overhang. Women had to worry about sleeping with you too quickly. They didn't want to get known as the local spunk dustbin. And, uh, <laughs> there, spunk dustbin. <laughs> So consequently, you had to sort of win them over. You had to woo a woman, you know, you had to treat her right. So, uh, traditionally, men went out on the Friday night on the pool. That's what we used to do. We'd go out, you put on a nice splash of Pacaraban. <laughs> Iron your shirt, polish your shoes. You went out on the pool, you'd go, I'm like, let's sort this out. And, then, <laughs> and you'd walk up to women, all right, babe, do you want a tear me here? No, here I am. <laughs> Go back to you, mate. The place is full of lesbians. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you generally got the brush off most of the evening. Uh, occasionally, one would be drunk enough to say, "I'll oh, take me number." <laughs> then you phoned up on the Wednesday night, not the Tuesday. Too keen. <laughs> this was before the mobile phone. People stayed in on the Wednesday. For the phone call, not Thursday. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Wednesday, phone her up, make arrangements for the next Saturday. Now, this is where the work starts. Okay, right. <laughs> Meet her up, a few drinks, then it's time to take her for a steak, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> a few Chinzanos. <laughs> if she wants a prawn cocktail, she fucking gets a prawn cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Very tight. We were still at the early <laughs> stages of continental cuisine taking over, so, you know, if you could get to a woman to the point where you were actually buying for her prawns, <laughs> lettuce, <laughs> in a wine glass, <laughs> drizzled with the dressing from a thousand islands... <laughs> you blow her mind, didn't you, really? Yeah? <laughs> it's all over, party's over. <laughs> <laughs> During the meal, you'd start to tell us the various lies that men like to tell back then, tell you you're going to get a motor and stuff like that. <laughs> so you're going to join the fire service. It's all to get the vagina. <laughs> you you like to see. That was different as well back then. Big hairy beast back in the 80s. <laughs> Once again, the young fellas don't realise we, what we put up with back then. This big angry, hairy, <laughs> Marxist, feminist vagina. <laughs> Had attitude, to be honest with you, back then, yeah, vagina. <laughs> if you were lucky enough to get to look at it, you, know, you pulled the jeans down, these great big knickers were there, and it was still <laughs> busting out the sides. <laughs> the vagina coming over the top of the knickers. It, Start rolling it down and it started coming out of you. It's like it was sad. Who are you looking at? Who are you looking at? You stare at me. Vagina. So the meal's been had. The chatting's. It's time to close in now. Like I said, I was a proper international player back then. <laughs> I had a bedsitter flat in the east end of London, private. Not, not, not council, no, pro <laughs> pri privately rented bed sitter in the East End, kitted out for love of all the latest gear of the international player, right? <laughs> Take her back, it's time to do a bit of showing off. Here we go. Walk her in, sit her down on the futon. <laughs> <laughs> She's half in bed already. <laughs> She doesn't realise that in all two hours that could be a double bed. <laughs> <laughs> Gaffer tape and some spanners, I'd sort of... <laughs> Time to set the mood, go over to my stereo stacker system. It's got a built-in graphic equaliser. Slip into the cassette deck. <laughs> now that's what I call music. Uh, two. Cassette. <laughs> 
Now, when Luther Vandross comes on, I'll be making me move. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to close the deal, right? So I'm going to show you something that normally closes the deal. It's time for the international player to start putting the uniform. I would <laughs> slip off to the kitchenette area. <laughs> which is curtained off. Like I said, it wasn't a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> it's curtained off. <laughs> Careful, ladies, careful. <laughs> I come back into the main area. I've changed in to my shiny black kimono. <laughs> it's a cotton mix. <laughs> Silk ones are a bit exy. Uh. She's checking it out. I've kept my jeans on. I'm not a monster. <laughs> I turn around at the optimum moment uh. to reveal the dragon. <laughs> As we know, women love a dragon. <laughs> I come back with a nice chilled bottle of blue nun. Uh. <laughs> We're not drinking cheap shit. <laughs> We're making love. Uh. What do you reckon, girls? Can you... See? Look and learn, lads. Look and learn. <laughs> uh. <laughs> now, listen, I'm not silly enough to know that these, are, these skills are no longer required. I've been back out on the dating scene. The rules have changed. Every time I come out of a relationship, they've changed. I go back out on the dating scene. Women are more aggressive. Ladettes, girls I speak to for a little while in a nightclub, suddenly they look at me and they go, look, shut up. Because <laughs> you're boring me now. <laughs> However, a little while ago I decided I'm going to shag you. <laughs> There's a man, you've got a bit of dignity. You go, oh, you've decided, have you? You've decided. <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> so, it's all over for me now anyway, all that stuff. It's over. I'm, you know, about eight years ago, I, I met a very nice girl. Because I went and got an education. This is the little bit that's changed my life. I'll talk about this very quickly. Uh, somewhere through my, in my late sort of uh, 20s, I went back to evening classes and night school and went and got a degree. And uh, so then suddenly I was, I'd shifted. I'd shifted classes, fundamentally middle class now. <laughs> Tried the teaching thing. <laughs> Good God. These kids are right. The, uh, the kids are like, calling the chicken children. They're coming at you from the side now. <laughs> <laughs> coming at you from the side with a cap on and a hood low. <laughs> coming at me in the school. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> the reason they're so obsessed with what's happening, they can't fucking see where they're going. <laughs> So I met a very nice middle-class girl. She's probably middle-class. She's been skiing and everything, all right? And, uh, <laughs> been skiing. Some people do all right. And, uh, we fell in love. We started making plans very quickly. Well, she did. I sort of got caught up in them. <laughs> I just want to lay on the set and get me tinky played with, but uh, no future in that, apparently. Uh, <laughs> we start making plans. Because you've got to understand, we complimented each other brilliantly. She likes multitasking, I like doing fuck all. <laughs> I mean proper fuck all. <laughs> not your teenage chilling when they say they're chilling. Oh, we're chilling. No, they're not. They're messing about with their phones. They're tapping on their computers. All right? I mean proper fuck all. <laughs> I mean laying on the settee, legs up the wall, staring at the ceiling. <laughs> fuck all. <laughs> even get bored. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> My girlfriend's a tremendous multitasker. Sometimes I can see her in the kitchen. She's only doing three things. She's not happy. <laughs> I shut down. You can make me a sandwich if you like. <laughs> Just to cheer her up. <laughs> yeah, look. So, we, we, you know, we've moved in, life's very nice, it's, we, you know, because... And so, about just over, about three years ago, so she looked up at me during lovemaking and uh, she said, I wish you'd take that kimono off. 
<laughs> Sometimes I don't know why I bother, you know. <laughs> she said, I want a baby. I said, well, if you come off the pill, I'll start leaving it in. The <laughs> <laughs> most romantic thing I could have said, but I know she was worried about her fertility, and I know men don't leave it in anymore. I think it's a big part of the problem, I think, because you left it in in the old times. You did. <laughs> Everyone had work in the morning. You didn't start pulling it out and spraying it all over the poor girl's head. You know, we're, we're, all, we're all busy people. <laughs> so she said, anyway, started leaving it in, left it in, baby, come. <laughs> Six months into having the baby, she turned to me, she said, I'm losing my identity. <laughs> So you finished your cleaning? <laughs> I said, well, go back to work. I don't want you not having an identity. I'm not sure who you are anyway. <laughs> Went back to work, leaving me to bring up the child on my own for about three months. <sighs> I used to push him down the street in his 500-pound pram. I resented the 500-pound initially. <laughs> then I got involved in a race in Summerfield. <laughs> <laughs> Some dickhead in a 200-pound buggy tried to cut me out. <laughs> I said, fuck off, mate, there's a monkey's worth of Pramette coming through here. <laughs> now, look. It's lovely having a baby, it's fantastic, but the life gets a, a little bit sort of predictable, and you know, because it's, you can't go out very much. So, because me and my girlfriend bought this house in this lower middle class enclave called East Dulwich, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we, we go out to the high street once a week to treat ourselves to a meal. We go to this little French restaurant. Always freaks me out a little bit going in there because there's no tomato sauce on the table. <laughs> and this raises the situation where I've now got to ask for tomato sauce. My girlfriend's panicking. She's looking at me like, please don't ask for tomato sauce. And I'm like, babe, I've got to have some tomato sauce. I've ordered the risotto. Tomato <laughs> sauce. Tomato sauce. I pluck up my. Uh, I said, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm making an effort. I said, excuse me. I said, uh, do you happen to have any ketchup in the building? The woman's given me that look that I've become quite used to. Like I'm some horrendous pleb. <laughs> she, I see, she went off to the kitchen, I saw her coming back across the kitchen. Little tiny china pot for me, about that big. I thought, oh, here we go, look, I'm getting a chip for a tomato sauce, here we go. <laughs> she walked up to the table, she tried to put it down and run away. I stopped, I said, hold on, love, hold on. And I took a sip of it. <laughs> and she looked at me, I said, yes, I'll take a bottle, please. <laughs> Boy. People, you have been absolutely lovely. Thank you very much, good night. Thank you. Look at this kimono on. <laughs> yeah. He said, fellas, take these tips, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that was the same kimono he had <laughs> back in the day that he had on stage. You know it. You know <laughs> they had props. <laughs> he had props. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Funny dude, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was um, both parts. First and the second part. That was hilarious. <laughs> Sit the hairy vagina. <laughs> There's so much hair. <laughs> Pulled out a pen. <laughs> ah, man. man. Yeah, man. Too funny, man. Too funny, man. Yes. Yeah, man. It's UK humor, man. It's just definitely, it's definitely, you know, it's funny. It's funny, man. It's definitely a little different, man. You know, the yeah. lingo, the slang, stuff like that. Yeah. And hey, you hear him talk a lot about like like lower middle class and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 yeah he <laughs> he talked about like... his apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like he had some type of like efficiency or something. Yeah. Everything was in one room. He had a <laughs> or what you call it? A, um, what's the bed? What's the bed you call? He said futon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> futon. The curtain over the bed. He separated the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. yeah, man. What do you do? 